Okay, so today we're going to do a flight on Flight Simulator 2020 using radio navigation alone. We're going to look at Little Nav Map, but we're not going to connect it to the simulator. So we're going to have to figure out where we are. So let's first of all go and have a look at Little Nav Map just to see a flight chart. So we are on the ground at Manston Airfield out on the east coast of the UK. And we're going to fly 270 degree route to Biggin Hill. But we're going to use radio navigation both to figure out the direction to go to get to Biggin Hill and to figure out where we are along that line. So obviously we could do figure we could work it out from our speed, but the interesting thing here is how we can do it using radio navigation. So as you will notice, I've picked this route on purpose. It's about 50 miles, so we get plenty of time to talk about the route. But there's also several radio beacons nearby. So we can use them, and the angle they are from our, our plot along the path, and we can draw it onto the chart as we go. So, if we go back into our aeroplane, actually before we do that, we're going to take have a little look at the airfield where we are. So we're on the parking up here. We're going to turn right out of the parking and taxi down because the wind direction is 240 degrees we really want to be taking off runway 28 not runway 10 as this is marked so in here just to make it make a bit more sense we can select the start position for departure and say runway 28 okay um so we're going to have to go down here turn left and go down onto the runway so let's go and get that started we can talk along the way about taxiing and all the rest of it. So before we do that, so we're going to turn right, down to the runway, turn left. Okay, so first of all, we'll get rid of the yoke out of the way. We're going to need to turn on the master switches. We're going to need to turn on the nav lights, the pit on heat, the strobe, the beacon, put the mixture in, make sure the throttle's back, and Oh, and we need to turn the fuel on as well. And then turn on the ignition. And the engine is started. Excellent. You can hear it's quite windy outside. That's kind of to our advantage because we get to see about dealing with wind along the way as well. So, how are we doing? So, let's sort the nav radio out before we even take off. So, if we zoom out on little nav map, so Biggin Hill, the radio beacon over there is 115.10. So we want to put nav radio, which is this one, to 115.10. And we make that the active. So you should see this will move, hopefully, or maybe it won't yet. Maybe we're too far away, because we are 50 miles away, remember. 115. Point one zero. That's correct, isn't it? One one five point one zero. Okay. We might put nav two to one one four point zero five. So let's go in here. One one four point zero five, and make that active. Interestingly, that hasn't burst into action yet either. Okay, we're not going to worry too much about that. We're also going to make sure that these agree with each other. They don't. So we've got 130 showing on this compass. So let's make sure this agrees with it. So the reason that's happened is because I entered slew mode to spin the plane round to make it easier to get out without having to do a pushback. So just I'm just comparing the direction of the magnetic compass with the direction of the one on the dashboard down here. Okay, so I think we're more or less ready to go. So let's straighten the view up. We have to make a right turn and then a left turn. So, wheel brakes off. Up a little bit so we can see. So we're going to taxi down. We're way out in the, 
the sticks at the runway, or at the airfield I should say. So we'll just follow the path down. We've got realistic weather and time, so it's accurate to the time right now. The, the wind is really trying to push the tail, which isn't helpful at all. So we're going to taxi out to the runway at Biggin Hill. Sorry, Manston, we're, at. we're flying towards Biggin Hill. Oh, a nice bumpy taxiway. aircraft. Follow this taxiway down. Didn't fancy going over that big bump very much. So I'm going to follow this down the airfield and then we'll taxi over onto the runway. We're not going to use ATC for this flight because I just want the time to talk about the radio navigation along the way. So we're not going to worry too much. Very fast taxi. You about 30, 40, 30, 40 knot taxi. We could probably almost take off. Whoa, the plane's being thrown around by the wind very, very strongly. You can see the wind socks are almost horizontal. That was the wind trying to lift the wing up. I had to actually put aileron input in. Hold it. That's full aileron. I can't hold it down. Okay, we're going to take off because this is nuts. I've never seen wind like this in the simulator. Whoa. Okay, let's get in the air. Look at that. Look at me being pushed sideways. That's madness. Okay, anyway, we won't worry too much about what's happening outside. So we've just taken off runway 28 from Biggin Hill. We're going to climb out to I guess about 1500 feet and then we'll start looking at the radios. You can see both radios are now switched on, now we've got above ground level. So we're going to climb out, we're coming up through 600 feet, 700 feet. We're heading to 70 degrees at the moment. So once we get to about 1500 feet. I'm just holding the 270 degree course at the moment. Oh sorry, heading I should say. Course is your actual direction of travel, heading is the direction you're pointing. Because of the wind we will not be doing 270 degrees over the ground, but we'll be able to figure that out when we look at the radios in a moment. We're going to work methodically through how we do that. Okay, so we're getting up towards 1500 feet, 1400 just coming up. Start trimming.
there we go so I'm putting the throttle back so we don't go too fast so let's start looking at instruments I'm just looking at the vertical speed down there so I'm, I'm looking at this dial while using the elevator trim I'm also keeping an eye on the compass because I'm aware the wind is going to try and push the tailplane round Okay, so as soon as I get it stable, we can start looking at little nav map to figure out where we are. So, we had this tuned for 115.1. So we need to look at the wind pushing the tail around. Um, we can tune this to 270 on the Omni bearing selector, which shows us pretty much what we thought, is on the 270 degree radial. So if we tune that exactly to 270, we're slightly to the right of the path. What that means is looking at the map we are slightly, oh well, look it's showing us that exactly. To help us now to explain what's going on I'm going to disconnect from the simulator. So we knew we were there so I'm going to right click and I'm going to go user points and add a user point and I'm going to type in the time 1357. So we knew we were there at 1357. So we know we're slightly to the right of that radial, so we're going to steer left just as we would with ILS. So I'm going to t turn to 260 degrees. Okay. And I'm just going to, so I'm watching the heading on the compass. We're going 260 now. I'm just trying to trim the elevators as well to get the vertical speed stable. So we're doing 260, so we should start coming back towards the 270 line. So we're steering back towards it. Does that make sense? So now we're going to look at nav 2, 114.05. So I'm just going to stop us turning, because we're turning again. We don't actually need to see anything outside. We can do everything by instruments. So what did we say? 114.05. So we've got 114.05 tuned in. So if we tune the... I'm going to turn the, the yoke off. If we turn the Omni bearing selector to get the needle in the middle, it will tell us the exact direction of the beacon. So we go slowly... 210 degrees. So if we imagine drawing a line from over here somewhere and go measure distance to here, so we're probably about here. Measure distance. Yeah. So we could go on here and say right click, user points, add position. 1359. Now both of them have drifted already, but we're not going to worry about that. We're only going to worry about this one for a few minutes. So we're flying along 270. Let's turn back left. So the wind has pushed the tailplane around while we weren't looking, basically. We're going to go more markedly to try and get back on the line. So we'll turn left to 250. So we're turning further south to bring us... We know we're to the right we know we're to the right of the 270 degrees line. So we're going further south. If you imagine in your head. We know we're this side of it. So we're going this way. So I've turned to about 255 degrees. Now we knew when we take off we had to crab on the runway. So it may be that's why we're not getting any closer. So I'm going to go to 250 degrees. So 20 degrees further left. Than we, than we thought we should be pointing. And we should see this needle, needle start to move. And in a few minutes' time, we'll take another reading from NAV 2. So all, nav, all we're doing on NAV 1 is trying to stay on this line, which is 270 degrees, or 271 degrees, it really doesn't matter, to Biggin Hill. We're going to use this one, and then secondly, that one later on, to measure where we are along the line. So where are we on the compass? We're still at 260. The wind has got under the left wing and is tipping us back. 
but we're slowly getting closer to the line again. So let's do it in a much more marked manner so we can see it happen. Let's turn, we're going up to 2,000 feet as well. While we're busy talking, the vertical speed has lifted us. So, 245 degrees. Coming up at 240 degrees. And you can see, now we're really coming back towards the line. It's going to be in the middle soon. So when it is, we'll come back to about 260 and see if that will hold us on the line. You have to remember how far away this beacon is as well. We don't have distance measuring in this version of the Cessna, which is good. On purpose, we don't. I didn't want it, because otherwise you, you've got even more information to go on. I'm just trying to show how you can triangulate. <coughs> so, let's keep going. How are we doing? On so we're almost back on the 270 marker. When it gets to the middle, we'll start to turn back. So I'll start slowly turning back now. So we're at 2,000 feet, which is fine. Vertical speed's fairly stable. We're gently coming back to 250 degrees. By the time we get to 260, nav 1 will be centred. So I'm just gently bringing it back. So I'm going to leave it at 260 degrees, because we knew we had to account for the side wind. So to make sure that we're level, you can see there's a white marker that shows through the orange markers at the top. If I roll, you can see the white marker on the artificial horizon. So as long as that's in the middle there, you can kind of see what's going on with it. Does that make sense? If I look a bit more closely, if I roll either way, when it shows in between, we're fairly level. Hopefully then, the compass won't rotate either way very dramatically. So, we're on the two, 270 degree radial. So now we know we're on this line. So how far along it are we? Let's do another reading from 114.05. So if we turn this further, we know now, when it's in the middle, this is at about, that'll be 210, 200, about one, one nine six, one nine seven, something like that. So let's have a look. Measure distance from here, about there. That was a pretty good guess, wasn't it? So we were there at, and let's put a right click and put a user point in, add a user point at 14.04. Normally you wouldn't do this anywhere like this often. Now we're turning, look, we've turned quite dramatically. While we were busy talking, the plane has started to drift. We have no autopilot on this plane. That was kind of by design. So we don't get to cheat. So we're coming back to 260. Now we know we're off, because we've drifted left, we are off to the left of the 270 line. So I'm going to go back to 270, knowing the wind will eventually blow us back. So as long as we keep going west, which is 270 degrees, we know the wind is going to push us. So we are off to this side, some, we're somewhere here. We know the wind will eventually push us back to 270. So we'll keep taking readings every few minutes from this um, radio station at Lid. And we'll keep flying to the that we're rotating again. We'll keep flying west. And we won't look outside. And we'll see how we go. When we get a bit further along, we'll tune to a different radio frequency for NAV2. So once we get kind of over here, we'll change to this one, May 117.90. And we could even take a reading from that. So if we were, we will know when we get to about 
where the M20, where we pass over the M20, if we measure from here, when that's kind of 199, 200 degrees, so when we're tuning NAV2 to 200 degrees for 117.9, we will know that we're about 10 miles from Biggin Hill. So we're drifting slightly, coming back towards west. So I'm going to just turn us slightly. So let's tune at nav 2 and find out where we are. So it's still at about 195-ish. Oh, sorry, 18, 187-ish, sorry. Not 19, 187 degrees ish it's a shame it doesn't show you the exact because yeah looking on this dial it's quite difficult to see what the exact bearing is so we'll leave it a few minutes and we'll do another reading fun isn't it just flying along so we're back on the 270 degree um, radial the wind has pushed us so I'm going to turn slightly left otherwise we'll end up the other side of it so let's just give it five degrees or so vertical speed's looking good although we're still climbing slightly so Changes in the wind we're heading into is obviously going to affect vertical speed because it affects the, the lift on a small aeroplane so dramatically. Your, your indicated airspeed does it affect the amount of lift and therefore elevator trim. So we're still on the right radial. So we can now, once we get to south, we'll know it's 180. We will know when this is in the middle that we're at 180. So if we go and figure out where that is now, measure distance, 185, measure distance, 177, so is it about here maybe? This is much easier on a paper map because you can use a ruler and keep it, yeah, so when we're at 180 we know we're exactly there. So we're on the line to the other one at 270, so we know we're on the yellow line. And we know when we get to this one, nav 2 will be aligned for south, yeah? So we're nearly there. When the needle hits the middle, we know we're exactly there and we can put another marker on the map and know where we were at that time. So we're coming up for 1410, I reckon it'll be by the time we get there. Yep, so... Let's have a look, where are we? Uh, little nav map. So we're going to right click and user points, add a user point, and we'll type in the time of 14.10 or 09, as it is on the clock. The reason I'm putting the user points in, you can't see them under the yellow line, but it's just nice to have a marker of when you were last there. Obviously in the real world, you might have a paper map and you might be writing on it with pencil as you go. So let's go and check the aeroplane. Are we still going the right direction? No, we're not drifted while we were talking. So we will very soon think about changing NAV2 to the other radio beacon, the one that was further over. So you can see, yeah, I guess as soon as we get to debt, that kind of distance, we'll change over to using May. rotating again. So now we're at a couple of thousand feet, we ought to lean the mixture out a bit, to be honest. Okay, so we're flying along quite happily. We'll edge back towards the 270 degree radial, because we're doing 260 degrees just under. And the plane is being pushed, it's rolling of its own accord quite interesting. 
how are we doing? So we're almost up to 170 degrees now to the beacon. So if we say when we get to 170 then, uh, let's go have a look at the map. So about there will it be? Measure distance from here. Yep, that will, so when we know when we get to 170, we know we will be there. I keep going into the recording program by accident while I'm alt tabbing. So we're still travelling along. We're coming back towards the 270 radial on Nav 1. So this is really just an academic exercise, really, to show you how, how you can navigate and plot your position on a map without having GPS. And you can just use the navigation radio beacons to do it. And I've deliberately switched off our aircraft plot on Little Nav Map. The, the end game here is when we get a few miles out from Biggin Hill, we will look up from the dash and we'll be able to see the airfield right in front of us, hopefully. We could even tune in, uh, if we look at Biggin Hill, we could even tune in the ILS. So we could divert when we get to that 10 mile mark and take a, a um, turn right, say 30 degrees, and join the ILS. So that might be a fun thing to do. I need to get that out of the... I'm just going to correct that. Yeah, so I can do one, one tab now to get between the two programs. So I don't keep seeing the recording program. So we're just waiting now until we get a bit further along the track and then we'll plot our position again. So if we estimate when we will get to 160, that might be a good place to switch radio frequencies. So when we, I'm looking at the, the nav radio here at 160 degrees on it. I'm also watching the compass over there and we're starting to, to turn quite a lot. So I'm gonna turn us back gently before I go back into little nav map. So when we get to 160, so let's go and find out where that would be. So if we go to here and say measure distance from here, 158, that was too far. Measure distance from here, 160. So we know when that's in the middle, we'll be at 160. So we can sit and watch carefully, we're, we're turning again. I'm just watching the instruments closely. We're still at 2,000 feet, which is good. Level us up again. Again, this is just a game of watching the instruments, isn't it? You can see the wind hitting us because the turn coordinator, even when we're in perfectly level flight, it thinks that the tail is not following the direction of the, the body's travel through the air. Okay, so we are now at that 160 mark. So we are here. So we'll right click, and we'll use a point, add a user point, we'll put in 1415. So we're now going to retune a nav 2 to 117.9. So we can zoom out slightly. 117.90. And make it the active. So this will suddenly change. So we now know the angle to the nav is about 225, 227 ish. Yeah, we knew we were here, so if we, we can check that. Yep, that's about right, that, that makes sense. Yeah, so we're somewhere in that region. We've turned while we were busy talking, so I'm going to busy and turn back. 
we we'll have to turn back to about 250, I guess, to get back towards the the 270 line. Otherwise, we'll lose track of where we are on the plot. So I'm just taking 20 degrees off of 270 to get us back towards the 270 degree radial. So we're just pulling this needle back. So if you imagine we turned right, we drifted right, so we're now over here somewhere, not on the line. So we're just taking a shallower angle, so we're heading this direction to get back to the line. Yes, the wind is just catching us now and again. It's quite blustery. It's quite strong wind out there. Okay, so... We know we want this to be 199 degrees, so we can just go and tune it to that. So 210, 200. So when this needle comes across, when we've got it tuned about there, to 19198 ish yeah? So we've got it there tuned in to about 199, so 180, 190, 199. When the needle comes across, we will know we're going to make our right turn. And when we make that right turn, we will go... Uh, let's give ourselves some time to think when we do it. Three, one, five degrees. Yeah. So we're, we'll be flying along here, and we'll turn to 315 magnetic. Now, we know we're along here somewhere at the moment. We know when that needle comes in with this tuned to 199 or 198. When it's 198, we will know we are here if NAV1 is centred still. Now, we have turned, look, while well, we're busy talking. So I need to go and correct that. So... The wind has pushed the tail all the way around while we were busy talking. So I'm going to take quite a drastic route to get us back on track. Let's level the plane back up, just flying by instruments, watching the altitude and the vertical speed and the compass. Just shows how the work, while you're busy working on one thing, you need to be able to multitask especially if you're in difficult weather, which I've kind of done on purpose with this flight. So you can see we're coming back towards 270, the 270 degree radial. As soon as you do, I'll actually do a quite a, a steep turn to get us back. So, not too steep, just enough. So there we go. We're back level. So now we're just waiting for NAV2. We're on the yellow line, so we're somewhere along here, and when we intersect the 200 degree radial for May, which is on NAV2, which is when this when the needle comes in, we'll have intersected it, we'll make our right turn. And then we'll switch on ILS. We'll retune NAV1 for the ILS frequency at that point. Because we know we'll only be going a very short distance without any kind of tracking. So we're down to 1500 feet, just going to keep an eye on that. Put a bit of elevator trim in. the nose up. Just tracking that yellow line to make sure we're on it. Or 
or the NAV1 frequency. So it's still tuned to 270 on NAV1. We're heading about 260, but we know there is wind that keeps pushing us away from it. And at the moment, I'm having to feed in quite a lot of elevator, tr uh, sorry, aileron trim as well, which is interesting. So should we take a reading and see exactly where we are in terms of this beacon? So it's at about 215 degrees at the moment. We want it to be 199, so how much is it from here? So measure distance, so that's 209. So that's about where we are at the moment. So let's put another marker in, user points, add a user point, 1422. So we're about there at the moment. So we want this tuned to 199, remember. So whoa, look at the direction we're going. That's crazy. While we're busy talking, the wind has pushed us around quite hilariously. So I'm just going to turn us back. I'm going to go back to 240 so we get back to the track fairly quickly. Because it's important that we're fairly accurate once we get to that point. So we want to tune this back to, two, to 199, wasn't it? Just check. 199, yes. So I'm going to not look at the map so much now. Because we need to really focus on getting both of these radios to agree so we know when we are here. So 199 and then we turn to 315. So I'm going to hold 240 degrees until we're back on the NAV1 radial. And then I'll turn right to 270. We should start seeing that needle start to move soon, I would imagine. Around the same time that we get back to the the 270 degree radial for NAV1. So we're just trying to concentrate on the moment of pulling this back online by going further. So we're we're going to be going west, but we're heading south at the moment just to pull the, the line in. So we're turning towards the line, essentially. And yeah, you can see the wing's been lifted up by the wind again, look. It's coming around all on its own. So we're almost back, so I'll start turning to bring us back to 270. So we're on the line again, according to NAV1. slightly to the right, so I'm going to turn slightly left, so we'll go to 260 and we'll hold 260 and see how it affects the needle. We're slightly to the right, yes. Now we're getting closer, we're seeing it affect the needle much more quickly, because obviously the closer you get, the more marked the changes will be on the needle. Same as with ILS when you're approaching. So how close are we getting with this one? Yeah, it's getting there. It's almost about to start moving across the gauge for 199. So we're pretty much on track with NAV1 for the 270 degree radial. And we're getting towards being on track with NAV2 for the 199 radial. Yeah, so we're getting, we're almost here, we're probably somewhere here. So if, as long as we follow the line across, then we'll turn to 315 degrees-ish. Just turning us back. While I was looking a little on the map, we moved 10 degrees. So I'm just trying to concentrate on getting us into a known place in the airspace. So the needle is now moving on NAV2. So when it gets to the middle, we are going to turn right to 315 degrees. Make sense? So I'm just turning slightly further left to try and get NAV1 to agree as well by the time 
Nav 2 also agrees. So we're just watching the needles move now. So Nav 1 is almost dead on. got thrown sideways by a piece of some turbulence. Of course, it could be that there are hills directly below us. Yeah, there's hills, look. So I'm going to raise our altitude slightly. To do that, I'll just increase the throttle, knowing it will lift the nose. Whoa. Yeah, that's hills. This is the danger of flying in this way, where I'm not looking where I'm going. So we're back on the 270 degree. So we were being thrown around because the the um, the ground below us was getting close to the aeroplane. We were getting affected more and more by turbulence from the hills around us. So if we get up to kind of two and a half thousand feet or two thousand feet, that will probably stabilise that slightly. So okay, let's cut the engine back again. So immediately the vertical speed has dropped off. So I'm going to use the elevators to kill that until the airspeed builds up gently. Coming back up to 90 knots. And we're almost on Nav 2, look. So we're almost at the point where we're going to turn right. So we'll mark that on the map in a moment. I'm just going to turn left a little bit. So we're coming around to 260 degrees on the compass because we've gone slightly to the right of the NAV1 radial for the 270 degree radial into NAV1. So yeah, we're at, at the point now where we've just gone over it. So let's go and mark that on the map. Now we've got the airplane steady. We were here. So user points, add user point at 1428. So now we're going to turn right to 315. Okay. So coordinated turn to 315 degrees. Okay, so we're now at 315 degrees. I'm just going to use the elevator trim to stop us dropping because it's descending ever so gently. While we were busy looking at a little nav map, we lost some height. And it really doesn't want to go 315 degrees. <laughs> Let's pull us back up. So the next thing we need to do, once I've got the aeroplane stable, back up to 2,000 feet, which is what I wanted to happen. We're flying that 315 degree line. And the elevator trimmed down a little bit. So we're going to find out what the ILS is. It's 109.35, 205 degrees magnetic. So, 109.35, and we know it's 205 degrees, so we're going to turn this to 205, which is there. So when, when we get closer, that will tune in, and we'll be able to fly it into the runway. 109, I need to make it active as well, of course. 109.35. 109.35, 205 degrees. Okay, we're turning. I need to correct that. Let's give ourselves a bit more room for error. We'll go to 320. Well, so let's, let's, let's 315, let's go to 320, because we just turned left back while we were busy looking at that. 
They're up to two and a half thousand feet, that's fine. Let's pull it back then to 2,000. So at the moment, the glide slope is above us and to the right of us, which is correct. So we need to make a left turn to 205 when that needle starts moving. So we're getting onto the right height for the glide slope already, look. You can see that happening. So I'm going to hold us at 2,500 feet. But then I'll forget about the altitude after a while and I'll follow this needle. So at the moment we're below the glide slope, but we're approaching it. Yeah, so although we're flying level, although we are slight, slightly climbing, so we're climbing towards it, if I stop us climbing. So at the moment, we're turning right. I don't want to leave to look a little nav map without knowing that we're going in the right direction. At the moment, we're coming out somewhere along here, and we're at almost the right height for the for the ILS. So we're heading out 315 degrees. So we're somewhere along here. Well, we have been turning, so we don't know exactly. Let's go back to 315. Once we make the turn to 205 degrees, we'll look up. And we should have no surprises whatsoever. We are quite, we're aiming to come in quite a few miles out though, so it won't be as close as we think. But we should have visible, you know, a good visibility. We're at 3,000 feet. So we've climbed up quite a lot to meet the ILS, which is quite interesting. So we're going to start chasing the, the ILS localizer now. So remove the throttle. So we'll descend hopefully at the same sort of rate as the ILS. We're still doing 315 degrees. So we're still tracking along this line. We haven't got to the glide slope yet though, because the needle hasn't started moving. For us to be coming in at 205. And we're starting to drift. Sending a bit too fast, so. So we're going to do almost about a 100 degree turn. As soon as that needle starts moving, we'll start doing a gentle turn. This is really just an academic exercise. We could look outside and we can probably see the airfield. But we just want to prove the point that about navigating by instruments. So I fly along, 315. wonder how far away we are from the needle moving. We must be getting close. So all I'm watching is for this needle to start sweeping across. And here it comes, is it going to move? Yes, here comes the needle. So we start our turn. To 205. 
not going to go there yet because the needle hasn't hit the middle yet. So we're now going at 2 1, 2 20. We're expecting the needle to come in. As soon as it's in the middle and we're doing 2 0 5, we're slightly above as well, so we'll start descending. Okay, we're going to look out of the cockpit now. <laughs> Cloud. Perfect. So we would have had to do this anyway. So we're now going to follow the ILS as we normally would. So we're going to turn. We're still not doing 205, are we? So I hadn't turned. So there we go. We're going to follow the ILS in as we normally would, knowing that we're heading, heading for 205 eventually. flaps down. I've no idea how far out we are, but we can use the altitude to, to work that out, I suppose. So now we're flying the ILS down. So we've gone slightly to the left, so turning slightly right. We're pretty good on the vertical part of the localizer. slightly above the glide slope now it's because I just dropped the flaps. So I'm going to drop the nose slightly. This is looking pretty good. Oh I think we can just about start to see bits of runway out there. Through the propeller. So if I sit up a bit in the cockpit so we can see over the nose. Hopefully we'll see some lights before long. This turned out to be quite fortuitous. I'm going to increase the speed. I've got the flaps all the way down now. So we're really hanging on the propeller, which is not really helpful. Before we go any further, I'm just going to check something. So I'm going to press escape to pause this. Yeah, it's not an offset ILS. So we should see runway 21 coming up anytime soon. The ILS is 205, runway 21. Okay, so we'll carry on flying. So we're just flying the instrument landing route really. So the runway is at 210 remember not 20 not 21 uh, sorry 22 zip was it? Let's have a quick look. Runway is 21 but ILS is 215 so the runway might not be as straight as the ILS if that makes sense. That might be why we can see those lights out there that are offset but we'll, we'll know when we get closer. So I'm slightly off to the left of the beam, so I'm going to straighten that up. Yeah, I think we can see it. So the ILS is not directly in line with the runway as far as we can see at the moment. But so we're back in line, so we come back to 215, or 21 I think we were at before. Oh, it's in front of us. We can see it. 
there. We are absolutely perfectly in line with it. Yes, perfect. So we get some visibility. I was worrying we were going to have like a Cat 3 situation and I'd have to open my eyes out on stalks to land. But no, we're perfect. Got quite a long approach, but that's good. So we'll just fly it in, fly down the ILS, put it on the runway. Speed up a bit. At least now we have visual. We don't have to worry quite so much. So yeah, hopefully this is quite interesting to anybody that's been learning about radio navigation. We've totally not relied on ILS or on Little NavMap telling us where we are. We've done the academic exercise of navigating by paper with a compass and writing times down. Obviously, if you wanted to go further than that, you could obviously use the times and the speed you've been doing over a period of time and you could project where, you're, where you think you're going to be. But typically you'd need a couple of people in the aircraft to make that happen. So I'm opening the throttle more and more, and we're not speeding up, which is quite interesting. That's better. So we're above the ILS beam, so let's just dip down. flaps for the moment and get some speed back because we're quite a long way out. This isn't a 737 landing, this is a Cessna. Let's get back on track. knots before it will complain at us. Let's try that out. <laughs> it's quite a vicious crosswind. Okay, so the ILS is back. I want to trim and trim and trim to keep the nose down. I wonder what sort of headwind we're flying into here. And we're down. Whoa, look at the wind kicking, kicking the tail as soon as we touch the floor. Okay, so I'm going to 
slow right down because we saw what happened earlier with navigating on the ground with the wind. It's quite disastrous sometimes. Okay, I'm going to stop the video there, but hopefully this is quite instructive to anybody that's been learning about radio navigation and being able to use cross-referencing between radio beacons to see where you are on a map. Okay, so I'm going to stop there. We'll bring the plane to a halt on the apron. There we go. Parking brakes on, and I'll stop the video.